Welcome to the seventh episode of this segment, Empower Your Life, where the aim is to bring positivity, motivation, encouragement, and inspiration towards your goals that you want to achieve for a very long time. So the next person that I'm going to interview, the person behind or the founder of Wellness Within, based in Singapore, a healthy focused eco-friendly store that was started to encourage a no nastiest and more sustainable lifestyle so let's all welcome jasmine hi jasmine hello thanks for having me thank you as well for allowing me to have some of your time to take this opportunity of interviewing you so how yeah, are you doing I, yeah i'm doing i guess great and not so great but i think it's all about balancing and um, being able to get out of it uh, of bad days when you can and uh, how's uh, your business doing and Singapore in general I think Singapore in general during um, I wouldn't say post COVID but still COVID situation uh, we're, yeah. we're doing great I think people are starting to feel like it's a norm it's just that days we uh, still have to scan in you know the QR code yes. at, at entrances and wearing masks <laughs> so I think people are you know, they, they know there's COVID, but they, you know, we still like that social interaction and we still go yes. out. So I think Singapore is doing great. Your, your business overall, how is everything doing? I would say business is a bit slow after Christmas. At the beginning of the year, we always take some time to um, sort of reformulate and mm-hmm. to rethink about um, some of our processes, our products and you know, some of the initiatives that we have and what else can we do better. Beginning of the year is always the slowest period for us. So okay. it's a good time for us to slow down and to rethink. I'm really appreciating uh, the time because time is always a privilege, a luxury to have. This moment is actually really important because you take time to see what else you can do better and you know, be able to contribute better as well. So I didn't start, I didn't start uh, out to be, you know, all this like entrepreneurship with wellness within, it just started, I think by accident as well, um, because from young, I've always had very sensitive eczema prone skin. I've always, I mean, I've been diagnosed with eczema as a medical condition since young. So mm. for me, it was a very natural process to you know, go to doctors, to find a medical fast, effective, you know, fast relief for my skin condition. Yes. And then one day I've discovered natural products because mm-hmm. the the steroids and the creams doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. So I started to venture about what else I could do uh, using natural ingredients or natural yeah. therapy to help improve my own skin condition. Which to mm-hmm. me actually any skin condition has to do with uh, your immune system and it's a health condition rather than a skin condition. So yeah. for me I started to, you know, all these habits, you know, started using natural products uh, and then also um, introducing them to my family who was unable to get all the products in Singapore. Mm-hmm. And that's when we realized that actually a lot of people don't get access to this, um, I would say, strictly curated um, natural products. Mm-hmm. And I know there is like this huge platform that provides a lot of natural products called mm-hmm. iHerb. And yeah. I used to shop on there as well. And I would spend hours and hours looking through ingredients mm-hmm. of individual products. Mm-hmm. And that's when I realized that the products are not really um, effective for me in terms of managing my own skin condition. Yes. So that's when I started to song and that's when I started to share them with my family. And that's how we decided that um, perhaps there might be an interest in, uh, in Singapore. Mm-hmm. who you know, these products and yeah that's how we actually started uh, Wellness Within so we try to educate people that you know there are healthier alternatives yes. uh, it's not just that brand that brand that brand in the drugstore you know I don't want to name brands it's not just this you know mainstream brands that's available there are alternatives available that could be um, that could be better for your you know your skin health or your general health uh, in, in particular like you know some of the chemicals that are used to formulate certain products as well they don't only affect your skin um, Mm -hmm. they also affect your hormones and you know hormones are very yeah they are a very important part of the human body for for women uh they affect Mm -hmm. your your menstruation your periods and 
that is something that more people should know about. But as we, you know, as we go along and we are, uh, you know, we keep seeing mainstream media telling you, oh, you know, uh, if you have paid through period, just take this. Yes. You know, or people keep pushing, um, you know, brands keep pushing products that, for example, disposal pads that's, you know, bleached, that's, um, that's made from plastic, that's not breathable, you know, you get rashes and people just think that, oh, that's just normal. But yes. that's not normal at all. Uh, and that's where we try to uh, raise awareness and educate people to inspire them to lead a more, you know, healthier lifestyle or a more sustainable one. I think it's, it's hand in hand. You know, if you're healthy, you're actually a more sustainable person because you don't have to use that many products to keep yourself, mm. you know, in good skin condition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, eventually, you know, you, you be someone with a better health, skin health yeah. as well. You started becoming more conscious about what you use and how the how the product that you use actually affects um, maybe the environment or maybe someone else. You know, like for example, perfumes, uh, etc. So it's really about being conscious about what you are doing for yourself and in turn uh, motivating others to do this. So you you have that kind of full support from your family. I would say it was unconventional to actually. Uh, venture into into starting your own business within my family yes. uh, and doing your own business was something that people were are you sure you know yeah. um, you do get support in terms of let's say if you want to do deliveries your family provided that support I guess I was passionate about that as well because I wanted more people to know about um, natural products or natural remedies um, to fix some of these skin conditions or mm-hmm. to me health conditions and my family saw that it was um, beneficial and therefore they were supportive because they see the good in the products that yeah yeah. so in the products uh, that we use and I guess that's how it started rolling uh, since six years ago wow six years ago and before that you were working in a corporate job or you're already yeah I was I was in a corporate role and it was um, it was just a regular regular job you know and that's it so at that time i was researching for all these products at mm-hmm. night mm-hmm. and that's when you know it started growing because I, I felt like i had a purpose to you know uh absorb this knowledge and yes. you know being able to also share this knowledge with other people now, a lot of people don't actually know many of the products that we that we stock actually Beauty. so that's when we had <laughs> <laughs> yes Yes, for us, it's a lot more work that we need to do to get out there and to reach out to people who actually don't know about the products. Hopefully, we will be able to plant like a seed in them, thinking seed. And they keep thinking about once they see it, they have certain impression, this certain thought about it, and then slowly they start thinking about, oh, okay, okay. you know, there are other alternative menstrual products that you could use. You know, it's it's all about it's all about healthier alternatives to mainstream products. Yes, which I think, in my opinion, during the pandemic, right, or still is, right now, the the right moment or right time for a lot of small business owners like you to provide more education or awareness on what product is good and bad. Because in my uh, personal experience, and and I'm guilty on this, that I just refer to, to recommendation, referrals. But of course, I slowly understanding that it might not work for you because this this particular product is a generic ingredients or chemical that used for everyone, but it might not as good for you. The same thing with the passion, right? Once you advise someone or once you give some recommendation, it might not work for you. And and I think this is for me personally, perfect time for small business owners like you to educate us what's the good, what's the cons of using something toxic or high in chemicals and something with more eco-friendly, uh, less damaging to our health and to our environment. So I, I hope that um, it'll be slowly bringing more awareness and I hope uh, as part of this journey that I'm having an interview with you, it will bring a lot of awareness across the globe about uh, living in a wellness you know, lifestyle. But I think you've also mentioned a, a very good point about small businesses because as small businesses, we do kind of have a very tiny voice in comparison mm-hmm. to bigger brands oh, yes. and corporations with- would have you know a lot of endorsements by you know celebrities or mm. um, social media influences, and that's when when we try to 
bring up a voice is just sort of being drowned by the bigger voices yes. who don't advocate the same path. So I think it's both. Um, I guess it's it's a duty for us as a small business owner because the reason why we created our own business was because there is not such option available in the market, and it's our sort of duty to you know raise awareness. But then at the same time, it's also very difficult to reach out to the masses who who I guess already have the impression that okay, product A is really good for you because of all these years of endorsements by um, mm-hmm. big names, you know. Mm-hmm. And they just, and they naturally gear towards that product being you know the best in the market, for example. Yes. And when you offer like an alternative, they'll go like, "Are you sure? <laughs> you know, does it really work?" It's just hard to be out there amongst all the different brands that's already available. It's true. It's true. And this is why I'm doing uh, one of my blog posts, which I told you I just recently bought reusable pads, and I mentioned yeah. there that not only helping your health your your our environment but it's also supporting small business owners out there that supporting this kind of campaign or uh, approach to help our environment you know and i think if we keep on uh, encircling our ourselves to with the like-minded with the same values with the same practice and with the same goals then I think and I hope that in the long term we will have bigger voice than just the bigger companies. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we will get there soon. Uh, but I do think that collectively, if we have our, all our voices together, you know, um, that would be a lot bigger voice than just individual of us trying to work towards a common goal. So while I was uh, doing the research and understanding your products, your website, and so on, I saw this particular uh, campaign or project that you are initiating, the project called Wellness Within Echo Initiative. So can you tell us a little bit about that? We try our best to be as eco-friendly as possible. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's where we work with different, I guess we have a lot, a few initiatives that we have in, in, you know, to help people to um, reduce waste where they can. So, for example, we work with this group, uh, this team of girls who started this initiative called Package Pels. They actually started this campaign to um, collect or they offer drop-off points uh, for people to donate their used but clean packaging materials. That's so, nice. basically, like polymerless boxes, bubble wraps, or, um, you know, packaging stuffers. And... Mm which are clean and reusable, right? So we work with them to be a drop-off point and people who are also trying to reduce their waste and they don't like to throw anything out when, you know, these packaging materials are actually perfectly usable. So mm-hmm. they will bring all their packaging materials that they collect over months and months and they bring it mm-hmm. down to us. For those that we can use, we will just take them in. Uh, for mm-hmm. those that we don't use, such as like bubble wraps, uh, we'll just pass it on to package pals mm-hmm. and other businesses to... I guess, circulate the materials within the community. So that's where I guess we encourage a more circular economy mm-hmm. where things just get passed around if they are in good condition as well. Yes, uh, yes. Especially with COVID, you know, everything has to be clean. And clean. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely the most important. Uh, but yeah. of course, if where we can, we try and circulate the packaging materials, reuse them and reuse them until they break down or they can't be used yeah. anymore. So I think that's one, mm-hmm. just one way we try to reduce waste as much as possible. We, we are also part of the Zero Waste Packaging Initiative that started by uh, the Sustainability Project. So it's basically all us, uh, all of us small business owners who need packaging and then we share them amongst ourselves mm-hmm. uh, and make sure that whatever we collect, it, it gets passed on and is being put to good use. Mm-hmm. Another of the I guess, initiatives that we have is also our 3 hours initiative where we uh, reduce, reuse and return. Uh-huh. Um, because we work with a few local suppliers as well, local brands. So uh, we can potentially collect all these materials or, you know, glass containers, glass bottles back. And we can return to them to be reused uh, mm-hmm. where we can. And for those that we can't, so if, for example, glass jars, you know, it's very hard to clean or um, there's no more use for it. Especially when we have glass jars from uh, overseas brand partners as well. So that's mm-hmm. when we collect them and we make them, you know, use it for other projects. So we... 
I think during Christmas period, we actually launched a new beeswax candles using um, upcycled chicken ass bottles. So those are not particularly skincare bottles, but then it was just collected. They were sitting there for very long in our, in our office. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering what I can do with it. And eventually we decided to make candles out of it. And wow. it was just a very small project that we just wanted to sort of raise awareness for this as well. And yeah, and the candles sold pretty well. As well. So that's one way we try to reduce waste. We reuse them in you know other projects, you know creative projects and things like that, and you know prolong the life before it gets thrown into a bin. I like that. I like that. You know, here in in Spain or in Valencia, um, which I believe, if I can remember it correctly, in Singapore it's not as uh, normal or or common to see big trash bins out there that you can separate. The, the plastic, the, 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 the cartons or the reusable ones. But here, it's, it's pretty much everywhere you go. And for me, that's starting to really more conscious and cautious uh, towards to eco-friendly, uh, sustainable lifestyle. So I practice of separating the, the, the you know, the wasted okay. food and then the plastic and the cartons or, or, or the, the paper. paper. And it, it feels good and I hope that it will become more common as well in Singapore because it's actually, again, going back to the education or awareness because I don't think it's, it's as loud as other things that happening to be actually part of our practices on a daily basis that we should also consider a serious one. But uh, I yeah. hope the project or initiatives that you're having will continue and it will get bigger and bigger and more people will support. In the future, we will see Singapore the same approach. Yeah, I think um, because Singapore is quite small, mm-hmm. And we don't have our own recycling facility. So I think the idea of recycling is just, okay, you know, you put them all into one blue bin that we have in Singapore. And what happens after that is something unknown. (laughs) You know, we've heard of a lot of reports where a lot of the recyclable materials are being exported out to different countries like Malaysia or China. And Mm. it just lands there and people just burn them or they just saw them on the landfill but for us it's like we're actually passing on our, our trash to someone else to take care of them which this is another thing that we don't feel the direct impact but actually we are slowly getting the the, the effect of it let's say the seafood because they're all getting the, the, the plastics or the waste that we throw. <laughs> we think that since it's not within our territory or area, therefore we should be safe. We should have a clean environment. And unfortunately, uh, this kind of news, this kind of information should be more exposed in the media. You know, do you agree with that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I think the media plays a very big role, but also. Yeah. Time, I think it's very hard for a government policy to incorporate all these recycling habits because it goes through, you know, sessions of sessions of discussion in parliament before it passes as a bill. While we as consumers or individuals or businesses wait for that to happen, I guess there's a lot of more ways we could do um, at our end for example you know keep your bubble wraps don't just throw them away um, yes. you know the polymers that we receive if they are in good condition they're not torn or anything we can reuse them mm. you know and we encourage a lot of individuals to pass on their you know clean and reusable packaging materials to us so that we can recirculate them amongst other small businesses that's just one way that we try to help reduce our impact on the environment it's just one one of the ways that individuals have to start thinking about what else I can do instead of I guess wait for governments to pass on you know policies or decisions yes, you know yes. I think recently in Australia they, they're going to ban styrofoam um, takeaway boxes so that's when you know the government has taken action and I guess a lot of people in in I think the western countries have a better recycling protocol you know they have like yes. a, of you have like the plastic, the glass, uh, the paper. But in Singapore, we just have one bin to take everything. Yes. And all this, mm-hmm. all these items actually go to a sorting facility, which helps the consumers a bit because you don't have to think too much about, mm-hmm. okay, I'm just going to throw it in a bin and what happens after yeah. it's just something else. 
also you don't understand but you know some materials is not just paper or like you know wrapping paper has a has a layer of lamination on it so actually wrapping paper can't be recycled at all so that's mm. something that probably a lot of people don't know but because if it is called wrapping paper therefore people thought that it's paper and paper. it's recycled yeah, yeah paper right? yeah. <laughs> into the recycling bin but actually a lot of times we can't uh, because of the composite materials we can't actually recycle them i just uh, recall that actually there are uh, recyclable bins i don't know in in, a, in the condo usually you have in the basement you have recyclable bins where you can throw plastic glass and paper but then obviously very rare people will do that only if you have a very huge packaging materials then you will throw it in the in the basement singapore actually have it but has it but uh, it's not as visible enough in in the public areas from from my they all go to the same place to be uh -huh, resorted okay. and then sometimes you know probably in the condo setting you might still get people who throw like trash you know unwanted you know maybe things that are non-paper yeah. into the paper bin so then this still has to be sorted anyway and I guess it's back to the individual, right? Are you conscious enough to not throw your non-paper things into the paper bin? I think the whole idea of recycling bin or actually thinking about your trash is still very new in Singapore. Agree, agree, agree. I think it should it should always start from inside, which is house, yeah. to outside. Because if yeah. it's outside, then it's it's already like a norm because you practice it already from home. I guess I would say that we were pretty lucky during our lockdown uh, mm. because a lot more people were buying online. So then the challenge for us is after the lockdown um, ah. because when you have stores, yeah, it, it's quite different, right? So um, during the lockdown, a lot of people have no choice. They can't go out. Shopping True. malls are closed. Um, mm -hmm. Shop and therefore they have no choice but to go online to buy yeah. so a lot of our you know our sales came online from our online um, websites and other online platforms and when the lockdown sort of like stopped and we went mm -hmm. back to sort of phase one and regular life again and retail stores were able to open we noticed that less there were less people going out and people were also not buying online anymore because they don't have to you know be stuck at home uh, and therefore it was it was harder after the circuit breaker because people were buying less online, you know, because of the whole um, virus thing, they were also reluctant to go into stores. People are wary uh, about what's going to happen next, you know, okay. and they are more conscious about how they spend and yes. likely not wanting to spend. And we actually have to continue to carry on our, you know, marketing activities. We have to continue to educate you know, to provide sort of value to our audience, that sort of effort where try to tell them something that they don't know, right? Don't tell them that plastic is bad. Maybe we can tell them plastic is good, but only if it's, you know, you reuse it and reuse it all the time. Yes. So for us, that's the most cost-effective and also one of the most efficient sort of marketing channels uh, mm -hmm. that we could use, that we can mm -hmm. use a lot. It's, it's, I think for us, it's just... A lot harder to find out what exactly people want and um, for us it's really a, a try and error uh, you just keep trying you know until you find your own audience and that's where your audience will grow with you i think the main purpose that we have mm -hmm. is really to share the knowledge about healthier alternatives um, there are other brands and other products that people could use and it's really for your own health mm -hmm. benefits Yes. Uh, it's not my health that you use yes. this product. <laughs> if you have a great product, then believe in your own product. Believe mm -hmm. in what you are doing um, and do it with a purpose. If you know that you are you know, you're doing something good, you have a cause in your mission, like what do you want to do? What do you want to achieve out of it? Uh, honestly speaking, if you just want to achieve dollars, that's not going to be sustainable because, you know, business can go up and down, right? If you just focus on, okay, I'm getting this amount of money every month and I just want to have more and more and more. But then you sort of, if you don't have a purpose with your business, then you don't derive joy in running your own business. I agree. 
So it's, I mean, if you're happy doing your job, you find a purpose in it, therefore you will keep thinking about, oh, how, what else, what are the good that we can do to contribute, right? But if you do not enjoy your job, you know, running a business, you know, you, you don't like to do your books, you don't like to do marketing, and you're starting to hate on it, then you need to take a step back to rethink about what else you can do. Why are you doing this? Uh, why did you even start the business? And the whys, the hows, you know, the whens, that's a very important question to, to ask yourself and to really know your position in this business and in this community and see how you'll be able to contribute. A lot of times it's, uh, you know, a lot of us are created out of, say, hype or, uh, you know, trends. Yes, and yeah. eventually trends will fade. Yeah, trends will fade. A couple of years ago, um, zero waste was very trendy. You know, everyone was buying straws and eventually at this state where because of COVID and all that, I can tell you my, uh, we're not selling a lot of straws these days. It's far less from what we used to be selling. If you caught on because you wanted to be part of that bandwagon, you know, that trend. And then today you're stuck with all this batch of straws that you have, you know, you bought. To sell. You can't do anything with it because no one's buying, right? So that's why yeah. you need to ask what is your purpose in starting your own business? Is it to be able to contribute to the community or is it be able to contribute to a good cause? Uh, know your purpose mm -hmm. and grow from there. Yeah, you do need to know yourself because you know you best. And that's where you can, you know, grow the business in the direction that you want it to be. Very, very profound. <laughs> I love when you said that. This purpose, it's and knowing the whys and whens when you mention that you yourself it's true because for example i ask you some advice this advice can be just a guideline a map but whatever works for me i still choose whatever works for me it can be a combination of everyone who tell me so but uh, i like that i don't really have any tips or advice <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> i've set up a business you need to know what you are getting yourself into when you start a business and you don't have much capital you start small and you have to do everything right mm. but when we started i had to do marketing i have to do my books <laughs> the accounting part of things i need to do like budgeting um, making sure that all our products are curated according to the list that we have mm -hmm. you know all the criteria it's basically in a small business you do everything you do you, do, you might do things that you don't want to do. And I had to pick it up myself because I wanted to cut costs as a small business. And mm. a lot of people think, oh, you're your own boss, right? You set your own working hours. Uh, you go for your own holidays at any time that you mm. want. And, and it looks like a glamorous job to be your own boss, right? But eventually, it's not like that because as, as a business owner, you work 24-7. <laughs> Literally, even in your sleep, you might come up with some brilliant idea and you, you actually get up to like, okay, I need to get this done, you know, and your brain never stops thinking, um, you know, as a small business owner, during your free time, it's actually working hours. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. for me, like even if we work regular office hours, so regular office hours is replying to emails, you know, talking to different uh, customers, mm -hmm. customer service emails, all that stuff. And then after hours is social media, books, <laughs> what else I can do, you know, what other products I can do. It's not stop. You can work any hours that you want, but you are literally working every single minute. And when you stop, you start feeling like the guilt, like, oh no, I'm not doing enough for the business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you leave and brief your business because you have to keep telling yourself, you know, you have to come up with different ways to, um, you know, tell people your story, tell people about the products, and you literally have your life. You know, as a small business owner, you, you breathe your brand, you know, you breathe your mission. <laughs> you are the soul of the business. Yeah. So it's really difficult for, to be a small business owner. For anyone who wants to start your own business, you really need to know why you want to do it and whether you have the motivation to keep going on even if, you know, you have like hundreds of bad days, you know. And what keeps you going has to be your purpose and your intention. Wow. It's true. Uh, some, uh, it's a one-man show, so you have to deal with that and make sure yeah. that you can. <laughs> Thank you. How do you keep yourself optimistic of balancing or maybe not balancing anything at all, but how do you keep yourself optimistic? It's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> I think we have both 
like I mentioned earlier, we have both good days and bad days. You are your reaction. Yes. And you are your own emotions and feelings. If you see the bad day as something, your choice. You no, know, no one can tell you that your bad day is, you know, is going to ruin your life, uh, mm-hmm. except you. Right? If you allow the bad day to affect you, then you yourself have to decide how you want to jump out of it. Yes. Because you are yourself, right? Only you can inc- you can control your um your reactions, your emotions, and how you handle the situation. So I guess one way, how do I sort of try to be optimistic is just to find your comfort area, comfort activity that you can do, or you know something like you know if you like to eat, go and eat, mm-hmm. uh, make yourself feel better. Mm-hmm. And that's just one way. Uh, just do something that you enjoy doing, uh, yes. even though it's a bad day, so that you know you don't don't let the bad day sort of get to you um, yeah. right away. You know, try to mitigate that feeling. Try to make sure that you find a solution that you are happy with, and you can move on. Mm-hmm. So that's that's very <laughs> true. Whatever. Situation, whatever people are saying or telling about you, whatever feedback that you're getting, it's upon you how you take it. Whether it's gonna ruin your day or you're just gonna okay, I heard you, I got that. So what can I do? It's it's very. Of course, it takes a lot of practice, right? You can't just like okay, it's okay now. I have eat everything. I'm feeling good. <laughs> I guess talking to someone will actually help you to process that bad day better, mm. that situation better. When you hear of different perspective of the same situation, you might have that light bulb moment where you say, "Oh yes, I didn't see that point." And maybe mm. if I adopted your suggestion, or you know, I considered all different perspective, uh, perception of the that, that situation, there may be a solution. It's not a bad mm. day after all, or it's not. It's not. Something difficult to handle after all you know different people will have different experiences that will be able to enrich yourself um, yeah. I guess that's when we talk to a lot of other small businesses and you know when we have a situation they will just ask what would you do you know how they handle it may be different from how yeah. we handle it but you could consider how they do it and see if that works out uh, better yeah. than what you intended for it to be done What products you have in your website, in your pop-up store, that based in Singapore can be starting to look at, and maybe can be helpful for them to start buying. So share to us where we can find you. Yeah, so our main platform is actually our website, which is wellnessbidin.sg. Um, that's where you can find a lot of information. We're not, we don't want to just be an e-commerce store, so mm-hmm. we do have informative sort of write-ups that we do under our blog section where you know we share certain tips or certain information that people don't already know or and certain recipes that we can do with uh, some of our food products nice. so we do try to be a platform where we are educational and we also provide the alternative um, mm-hmm. if you need to if you don't want to because i think at the end of the day do what you think would Fit you the best. Uh, do what that makes you feel comfortable. For me personally, I don't like hard selling, and I just feel like I need time to absorb. I'll go through all the benefits. You know, I'm just someone who needs that time, and I I appreciate if our sort of our customers or our audience take their time to decide that okay, I've read enough. I've made a, an informed decision, and I think this is a good decision that I'm going to embark on if I were to switch to one of the products that One Us Within carries because. I've read enough, and that's going to help me in my journey towards mm-hmm. leading a more sustainable, a more healthier lifestyle. So I, I feel that also with natural products, it doesn't work the same as, uh, you know, medication or those fast relief products. Mm-hmm. And people do take time to, you know, see the effects. And I think it's a journey. It's it's the process that you have to take, and that's where we come in. So we we encourage people to you know just slow down. Read through all the information we have. We try to be as informative as possible and right. provide you all the information and all that. And ultimately, if you are convinced, then buy. If you're not convinced, it's okay. It's just information that you absorb. If you could share it with someone, that's great. And I I truly believe that it's the you know it's the influence that every single individual can have on someone else. You don't have to be an influencer to influence. Uh, you yourself as a person, you can encourage other people. People to take, yeah. uh, you know, steps to help you lead a more from making a switch to a different product. 
on Instagram. We are on Facebook. So you can find us at uh, Wellness Within SG okay, on well, Instagram. And, yep. And if you're on Facebook, just look for Wellness Within. Wellness Within. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, give us like five products mainly that you are you are selling. So just to have an idea before they can take a look. What are those five products that you have on your website? And one of the products I've been using for nearly five years now are my cloth pads. So definitely recommending my cloth pads to anyone who, who anyone who menstruates because I think it's really one way to you know reduce a lot of plastic from your life. Mm-hmm. Um, the second one would be our nut milk base. Mm-hmm. Milk that's in a jar, but it's sort of like concentrated paste. So you only need one teaspoon to make a, a, a liter of and that one jar saves you 10 cartons. Wow. Yeah. Ways that will be used. For us, we are very health focused. So that that product is made without um, sugars mm-hmm. and it's vegan. I think that that have to be, oh, I can't choose, you know, because a lot of, but because <laughs> a lot of skincare may work for me, but it may not work. Uh, but Generally, I do think that you know some of the solid shampoos or the carrier oils that we have, they are very good and high quality that really helps me in maintaining my skin health. So definitely some of the carrier oils and the short solid shampoo would, would really be, good, be um, good alternatives as well. Thank you so much. Well, there you go. That's the final and we covered everything and very informative, very inspiring. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having me. We, I hope the your week will go really well and continue to stay safe. Right? Have a great day. Bye. Bye.